The Hannity President Trump, he is on fire right now, tonight, on Twitter, and he's driving the left predictably absolutely insane. You're going to love this. Also tonight, you do not want to miss The Hill's John Solomon out with an explosive report about the FBI's corrupt Clinton email investigation. We have that exclu exclusive report. And President Trump's 2017 successive had now created a Republican blueprint for the midterms. Will they follow? And last year was an epic failure for fake news in this country, especially the fake cannabis news network. We'll explain all of that. But first, tonight's breaking news, opening monologue for the new year. So in spite of vicious media attacks and many political obstacles, well, 2017 was a very successful first year for President Trump. Now, before we get to the full list that the media will never show you, well, let's take a look at the economy. Stock market is at an all-time high and hit over 60 record closes in 2017 alone. The Dow Jones was up 25%. Over $5 trillion in new wealth has now been created. Unemployment, yes, unemployment at a 17-year low sits at just 4.1%. And since taking office, President Trump has created 1.7 million new jobs. African-American unemployment, a 17-year low. We ended the year with consumer confidence sitting at a 17-year high. Home prices are up 6%, as is home building. Regulations have been slashed at a historic rate. And the Trump administration cut 16 regulations for every new one that was created. Also, let's talk about GDP. Now, so far under President Trump, we have seen two quarters over 3%. Let's compare that with President Barack Obama, the only president in the history of this country to never reach 3% GDP growth for an entire year. And we can't forget about Obama's terrible economy. Millions more people on food stamps and in poverty, 95 million Americans out of the labor force, the worst economic recovery since the 40s, the lowest labor participation rate since the 70s, and and the list goes on. Worst recovery since the 40s. Lowest home ownership rate in 51 years. And unlike Obama, business confidence is now soaring under President Trump. In fact, the news is so good that even the liberal New York Times cannot even ignore this. Take a look at this headline. I didn't make it up. The Trump effect. Business anticipating less regulation loosens the purse strings. This is exactly what we've been seeing happening all across the country. You couple that with the brand new one point $5 trillion tax plan that is now taking effect. And what you have is a recipe for a Reagan style economic explosion. You, the American people, you're beginning to see the direct impact of this tax bill. For example, companies like Boeing, AT&T, Comcast, Wells Fargo, and Fifth Third uh, Bank Corp all announced employee bonuses or pay increases following that bill. That's real money back in the pockets of the forgotten men and women that deserve it in this country. Take a look, for example, what happened over at, yeah, liberal CBS News. They had an accountant crunch the numbers to see how the tax plan is going to impact the middle class in this country. Uh-oh, it didn't come out the way they expected. Watch this. We wanted to see how folks will actually fare. So we asked households from three different parts of the country to send us their tax returns, and then we had an accountant calculate how things will change for each of them. A single mother who rents a home in Cary, North Carolina, her income last year as an administrative assistant was a little under $40,000. If she were your client, what would you tell her? I got good news for you, Marcy. You're getting more money back next year. Amber and Jason Edwards were also hoping for some good news. You know, I hope it alleviates, you know, pressure on the middle class. Whether it does or not, I don't know. I actually think they would pay tax on about $12,000 more of income, but because of the lower rates, they actually end up saving a little bit of money. Honestly, I'm a little surprised because, well, what you had said, Initially, you thought we were going to have a higher tax bill. Right. They're not the only ones. Melissa and Lane Lev also expressed concern about next year's taxes. I'm thinking they're going to be higher. Overall, he estimates they'll be responsible for nearly $13,000 less in taxes. Well, that's good. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Can I get the accountant's number after this? <laughs> so wait a minute, so all three families that we brought to you, they're all going to see a decrease in their taxes. Every single one of those families will have more money in their pocket next year. 
Look at that. All three families are saving money. The tax cut will help middle class families. They desperately need it. And by the way, the bill also gets rid of the Obamacare individual mandate and it opens up energy exploration in Anwar. Oh, the lifeblood of our economy. More energy independence. And by the way, long term secure jobs at high wages for Americans and lower prices for the entire country. All good. And when it comes to ISIS, President Trump, he has unleashed the U.S. military and as a result, letting them decide all but destroyed the terror group. Look at these numbers from the Department of Defense that the president tweeted out. The military under President Trump's leadership has done more in 11 months to defeat ISIS than Obama did during his last 28 months. And that's just a small sample of President Trump's many accomplishments for 2017. Take a look on your screen right there. Here is a list of President Trump's accomplishments for 2017. Ask yourself, have you heard the mainstream media, the destroy Trump media, anybody on the left, any liberal ever mention any of these things? Have you heard them talk about how the president's accomplishment and all of these accomplishments have positively impacted the country? Probably not. They want and have wanted from the beginning the president to fail. Now, this is exactly why the media, the pundits, the political elites are predicting a huge, massive Democratic landslide in November of this year in the midterms. But before they get too giddy, too excited, let's keep this in mind. Well, these are the so-called same experts, political experts, who all said President Trump never stood a chance. So maybe they should put a little bit of the pump on the brakes here and not get get so giddy. As a matter of fact, it may turn out to be just the opposite. The president, by the way, has created what I am calling a, for a blueprint for victory in 2018. I hope the Republicans in Washington are paying attention. Now, they did get their act together in December. I do give them credit. But they need to do more. They need to keep the momentum going. Tax cuts, that's a great start. But they need to keep, for example, like building the wall, finish repealing the disaster that is Obamacare. Keep that promise. Replace it with free market solutions health care savings accounts, health care cooperatives. They should also pass welfare reform. It's desperately needed again. They should cut other wasteful government spending programs. We know the Democrats, they're signaling that they want all kinds of concessions in these upcoming negotiations in coming weeks. Republicans, you need to show some backbone, at least for once. Stand up for principles. Get your identity back. And here's why. You always get the tax cut. Uh, you never get the tax cut. You always get the tax hike. You never get the future spending cuts. We always get the immediate uh, concession or amnesty, but you never get the border wall built. You never get the border security. So you Republicans, you need to take this past approach and flip it upside down because so far it fails every time. So the GOP, you want to win in November? You need to demand that things like the border wall will get built and built first before anything else can happen as it relates to immigration. Now, the American people, they need to see two, 300 miles of this border wall built before the election. That will help you politically, and it's good for our security. And the same goes with other issues. That's the blueprint politically for success in 2018 in the midterms. And Republicans, you follow that, you'll be successful. Also tonight, if 2017 is defined by any one thing, it will be the news media's epic fail. What do we hear all last year, the entire year, from the mainstream liberal media? Russia, collusion, 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 Russia, Russia, Russia. Well, that fake news narrative has pretty much completely blown up in their faces after a year of nonstop, breathless reporting, anonymous sources, hysteria on their part. Because so far, up to today, zero evidence of collusion between President Trump and the Russians. So now the media, oh, they've got to latch on to something quick. They're not going to admit they're wrong. So the new narrative of the liberal media is that conservatives actually hate the FBI. They hate law enforcement because of the bias that we're exposing in the Russia investigation. Watch this. It is astounding to see conservatives acting like the FBI of all organizations is some kind of well, liberal, the difference, though, liberal deep that, state you know, yeah. horror show. And the message is, don't look at or think about what may be under investigation. Let's find whatever we can to undermine uh, the pillars of, of the respect that we tend to confer upon institutions like the FBI and the Justice Department.
There's only one institution that really has been tainted through these months, and that is the Trump presidency. It's tainted by the president's lies, by his disrespect for American institutions operating under the law. The career civil servants at the FBI and in the intelligence community are working as hard as ever, but this can't be good for morale. Well, that's the new narrative. Conservatives, this is laughable. Republicans hate law enforcement. And you know why it's laughable? Because the liberal media, they are not the people that respect law and law enforcement, and they've been that way for decades. We'll explain in a second. But first, I want to educate all my failing colleagues in the media that have been wrong so often. Now, if you had any sense of real law and order in our constitutional republic, you might investigate Hillary Clinton and, yeah, the numerous felonies we know she committed, if you care about it. You should maybe look into her top aide, Uma Abedin, and her criminally mishandling of classified information in those emails. And if you in the media, if you really cared about truth at all, maybe look into this. And that's Mueller's merry band of Democratic donors who, let's see, contributed, oh, only to Democrats, politicians like Obama and Hillary and the DNC. Imagine for a second if it was a bunch of Republican donors that were investigating through a special counsel, Hillary Clinton. Yeah, you guys in the media, you would be foaming at the mouth on a nightly basis. And if the media, if you're interested in truth, wouldn't you ask why Hillary Clinton and the Obama administration, why would they ever do something really stupid and give 20% of America's uranium supply to Russia? Yeah, that Russia, Putin's Russia, the adversary, the bad actor Russia, when, by the way, we don't even have enough uranium as it is. And maybe you'd follow the money if it was Donald Trump and $145 million pouring into the Clinton Foundation and her coffers while she's Secretary of State from the very people involved in this particular deal. Again, if it was Donald Trump, I know you'd be all over it. And, of course, you would want to know, oh, was there a quid pro quo? Is that pay to play? But, of course, you don't want to know that truth. Now, let's go back to this new narrative that's coming from the fake news media at, that conservatives hate the FBI. The exact opposite is true. Now, on this show, if you have watched, this is now my 23rd year, I have always respected the men and women in law enforcement, policemen, firemen, paramedics. Uh, I respect the intelligence community and, of course, the FBI and even the CIA. Yes, I respect the hard work they do. And now, the biased press. They're the ones who have this history of utter disdain for members of law enforcement. For example, it wasn't that long ago, the media was trashing police. Remember how many of them supported Black Lives Matter? You may remember this. It's a great invention. It's called videotape. It can remind you. Thousands of Americans are marching in New York and Washington and across the country demanding a justice system that applies the same to everybody and honors our values. And you, uh, we want you to know that our hearts are out there marching with them. Many African-American people said, look, we were introduced to terror long before 9-11, the vicious police forces of America that have victimized us and the way in which white supremacy operated. What's flared up in Baltimore has heightened awareness once again of this issue of police brutality. Yes. In Baltimore, alleged police brutality. We have repeatedly said on this show that we have the utmost respect. We praise law enforcement, the FBI, the intelligence community. The issue we have in this particular case is, case is very specific because you have a few select people that have shown a very anti-Trump political bias. So we have to ask the media a couple of questions. Do you support people like Peter Strzok, the guy that hates Trump, loves Hillary, the FBI agent involved in everything, and his FBI lawyer girlfriend, Lisa Page? Together, by the way, they call President Trump just about every single swear word that I can even think of, and I swear. And by the way, attack Trump and their supporters. They also texted about an insurance policy in Andy's office, which we think, of course, is Deputy FBI. FBI director Andrew McCabe in case Donald Trump actually pulled off the impossible and won the election. So do you media people, do you support people like the disgraced former FBI director Comey admitted under oath to having his friend leak information to the New York Times in the hopes it would bring about a special counsel, which it did, and Comey also li likely broke the law, writing his Trump notes on FBI computers, and then, by the way, removing that government property from the Bureau, and by the way, he exonerated Hillary Clinton, this is my favorite, in the email investigation before he ever did the investigation. 
I'm sure if that was against Hillary, you guys would be pretty upset. And then, of course, Mueller's team of liberal donations. As we have told you, over $50,000 his team has donated over the years to Democrats. And by the way, none to President Trump. One of Mueller's top investigators, Jeannie Ray, represented the Clinton Foundation during a 2015 racketeering case. I guess she's not biased. And then you got Andrew Weissman. He's the guy that oversaw the highly controversial obstruction of justice case against Arthur Anderson. And by the way, it destroyed the company, cost tens of thousands of jobs. In 2005, the U.S. Supreme Court turned over Weissman's conviction, a 9-0 unanimous ruling. And as part of the Enron investigation, Weissman also sent four Merrill Lynch executives to jail. Hell, that conviction was also overturned by the Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. That's Mueller's team. And next, you have demoted DOJ official Bruce Orr and his wife Nellie. Bruce Orr met with Fusion GPS. You know, those officials that came up with the phony Russian propaganda dossier that we now know his own wife was working on the opposition against Donald Trump that produced and bought and paid for that fake news Russia propaganda. Sounds like collusion to me. And finally, of course, the deputy FBI director, Andrew McCabe, his wife, Jill, took over a half a million dollars from Clinton ally, former Governor Terry McAuliffe, and Democrats for a failed Virginia state Senate seat. That's an insane amount of money. McCabe is also directly tied, well, like so many others, to the dossier. And during recent testimony on Capitol Hill, McCabe conflicted statements from previous witnesses and also claimed not to know when he found out the Clintons and the DNC funded the dossier. And according to reports, McCabe is expected to retire next year with a big, fat taxpayer pension. Does any of this matter to you in the liberal mainstream media, or do you just like to fail and be wrong every day? You know, are you supporting all these people? You're supporting that conduct? You're supporting that political bias? You don't see a conflict of interest? Do you really think that this isn't corruption at the highest level? You know, these criticisms that we are making, these are facts. They're not about institutions. They're about the violation of constitutional rights and the abuse of power at the top levels of our government. This is serious, and we've been right, you've been wrong. And finally tonight, three major foreign policy stories. North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un is threatening the United States by saying that a nuclear button is always on his desk and that he has nuclear weapons that can now reach the United States. President Trump just about, well, 45 minutes ago fired back on Twitter saying, well, he has an even bigger nuclear button and his actually works. We'll have more on that later. And President Trump is also putting Pakistan on notice by tweeting and calling them out for helping terrorists and not fully cooperating with the United States. He's right on that point. And also, finally, a major story, protests continuing tonight to break out in Iran. So far, 20 people have been killed. Over 450 people have been arrested. Now, these are people that are revolting against this repressive regime and these radical mullahs in Tehran. It's something that President Trump actually predicted would happen back in September. Now, the Mullers are scared out of their minds, and this is now the opportunity of a lifetime for the people of Iran that have been oppressed, people that are getting killed for being gay and lesbian, women that are treated horribly. They can be free of these radical dictators. Joining us now, reaction of the New York Times bestselling book, Vengeance, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor, Newt Gingrich is with us. Mr. Speaker, welcome back, and Happy New Year, sir. Happy New Year. It's great to be with you, and I think it's going to be a great year. You know, you're, so you're writing, I think it was the most viewed on, on FoxNews.com, underestimate Trump at your own peril, and then 2018, get ready for the political surprise of 2018, because I'm watching and listening to everyone else in the media, and they think this, this is going to be the biggest beatdown for Republicans that we've ever seen. Well, I, you know, I keep trying to remind people that uh, all of these folks who are currently analyzing on Sunday morning talk shows were the same people who were wrong in 2015 about whether or not Trump could be a candidate. They were wrong in 2016 about whether or not he could win the nomination. They were wrong in the fall of 2016 about whether or not he could beat Hillary. And they've been wrong for all of 2017. So I started with the idea, I listen to them carefully, take exactly the opposite position, and almost every time I'm doing better than they are. And I think this is going to be a good year. I think uh, the tax cut bill is so central to the future of America and the philosophy behind it of lower taxes, 
more take-home pay, more job creation, better business environment is so central to what makes America tick that I think the Democrats who unanimously voted no, think about that, Sean, they unanimously voted for higher taxes, bigger bureaucracy, fewer jobs. So the Democratic Party's offer is, uh, you're going to be out of work, but we'll get you food stamps. I think that's a losing proposition. So assuming that after a year of investigating Trump-Russia collusion and coming up with unrelated charges for Paul Manafort, General Flynn lying to the FBI, we now find ourselves in a position, and we'll get into this in great detail, where there are issues about collusion, and that would be Hillary funding the dossier paid for with Russian lies, misinformation, propaganda, all to influence an election. Should that be a big issue? Or, or Comey and Peter Strzok writing an exoneration before an investigation? Or the Uranium One issue? Why would anyone have ever allowed 20% of America's uranium to go to Vladimir Putin, especially knowing about bribery, extortion, kickbacks, and money laundering, you know, a year and a half earlier? Robert Mueller knew about it. So do the Repub does the Republican Party have an obligation now to go after what we did find as a result of the investigation that the Democrats never really expected to find? Look, I, I don't think it's just about Republicans or Democrats. Uh, the very core of the United States is a belief in the rule of law, because it's the rule of law which protects the weak from the strong. It's the rule of law which protects the poor from the rich. It's the rule of law which ultimately protects every citizen from their own government. Uh, we have an obligation as Americans to want to know whether or not the Justice Department had been corrupted, whether or not senior leaders of the FBI had been corrupted. Uh, we have an obligation to find out whether or not they were putting in position of power people who were so totally biased that they couldn't possibly be. Uh, part of a Department of Justice, they had to be a part, a part of a department that was going to go after and persecute people. And I think that uh, what you've raised is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, I think we're going to find out during the course of this year uh, about a great deal of uh, mismanagement and inappropriate behavior in the FBI and the senior level uh, in the Justice and Department. And the State Department. And I think we're going to go back and we're going to, and, and the State Department, and we're going to go back and we're going to learn uh, a great deal more about the corruption inherent in the Clinton Foundation uh, and the corruption inherent in the entire investigation of Hillary. So I, I don't see how you can walk off. It's not a question about a vendetta against the person. How do you have this scale scandal and just walk off and forget it, particularly when it's just happened last week? We learned that Huma Abedin had uh, an additional set of emails, at least four of which were classified, and passwords. Uh, on her husband's uh, laptop. Yeah, and, and so, passwords uh, it's, it's, for access uh, it's to more Unbelievable. All right, let right. me ask you about it's Iran. Just... Four months ago, when the president was speaking at the United Nations, he predicted there would be an Iranian, the Iranian people would revolt. Now we have Iranian protesters attacking police stations. They stormed an Iranian military base, according to reports, and they are chanting death to the Ayatollah. Very different than the Green Movement in 2009. Now we have a president supporting those people that want liberty, freedom, maybe even constitutional government. Uh, if you're the president, what do you do now to help those protesters? Well, let me say, first of all, um, my newsletter tomorrow is going to be President Trump, Iran, and leading from the front. Uh, the opposite of Obama's famous leading from the rear comment. Uh, second, I think we have an obligation to, uh, first of all, maximize the uh, production of, of our various radio and television programming going into Iran. I think we should be gathering up, and I understand from, uh, uh, from Ambassador Haley that, that uh, uh, they're likely to ask for a United Nations Security Council meeting. Uh, on this issue. I think we should be putting real pressure on the Europeans. Uh, they're always pious about human rights. Well, here's a chance to stand up with us. Uh, we should be doing what the president has done, to his credit, which is uh, issuing very strong warnings uh, against the Iranian dictatorship, killing its own citizens. And I would hope when they come back next week uh, that the House and Senate will pass 
very strong resolutions condemning the dictatorship. I mean, here is a clear definitional moment when it's impossible to believe that the dictatorship is a popular government. Uh, this is a repressive, brutal dictatorship. Uh, it killed right. over, uh, I think it was over uh, 30,000 people in 1988. Uh, I am afraid that they're prepared to come back and kill a lot of people. We should be very aggressively publicly opposing that. All right, Mr. Speaker. Happy New Year. Great to see you. And a lot of news tonight. Coming up, John Solomon is here. Brand new report on the FBI, their mishandling of the entire Clinton email case. He'll be joined by Sarah Carter. Peter Schweitzer also investigating. Later on, Sean Spicer, Michelle Malcolm, Tom Fitton, and Pam Bondi. Happy 2018. Glad you're with us. And welcome back to Hannity. All right, The Hill's John Solomon has a massive bombshell report out tonight. The headline, congressional investigators find irregularities in the FBI's handling of the Clinton email case. Solomon reports that documents reveal the FBI agents believe laws were, in fact, broken just by the, quote, sheer volume of classified information that, in fact, passed through Clinton's server. Also, Solomon reporting 17 witnesses, key witnesses in the Clinton case were interviewed after James Comey and Peter Strzok had begun his exoneration statement. Here to break it all down, the author of Clinton Cash, number one New York Times bestseller, Peter Schweitzer, now Fox News contributor and, of course, investigative reporter Sarah Carter and the man himself from the Hill, John Solomon, tonight. Okay, massive, overwhelming evidence that laws were broken. Overwhelming. Tons of volumes of classified materials passed on. We also, the exoneration before the investigation, John, and it goes on from there. And quoting, you know, one congressman is saying, the whole thing was rigged. The, the, in other words, it was rigged to exonerate her and not have equal justice under the law. Explain. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. Uh, these members of Congress, they got a briefing just before the holidays, and this sort of, it was a cannon load of, of new information to them. And I think uh, one of the most interesting things, let's just take it and put it in context of Russia. If, if Bob Mueller had exonerated Donald Trump before he had interviewed 17 key witnesses, there would be an outrage Trump. in Washington, right? If, if uh, Bob Mueller had learned that an, uh, a key witness had destroyed evidence that was under subpoena, then lied about it to conceal the fact that he destroyed it, and instead of prosecuting that person, they gave them immunity, uh, we'd be in outrage in Washington. That's what happened in this case. Uh, lawmakers who got this briefing from Deputy uh, Director McCabe on the 21st of uh, December were just floored by the level of criminality and concern the FBI had in the outcome. If you read the statement from Comey, you swear they were exonerating her. These lawmakers felt like the FBI had plenty of evidence to prosecute her. Yeah, all right, let me go to Sarah. You've been all over this story as well. This confirms, you know, this new narrative that, oh, conservatives don't like the FBI, law enforcement, the intel community. No, we don't like if you're rigging the criminal justice system for political purposes to help one candidate over another. Isn't that what this is about? Uh, Sean, it's not just the congressional members that were surprised by this. Look, the FBI themselves, FBI agents, field agents who were working on these cases, not the people on the seventh floor, not McCabe, not Comey, not Gaddis, all these guys on the seventh floor that were in control of this investigation, but the people that were on the ground collecting the information we're just as angry. We're just as angry as these congressional members were at learning this information that John reported. We know there's so much more out there. We know that there's concern that McCabe may have obstructed justice. We're seeing this now and slowly trickling out in some of these reports. We don't know if that's completely true yet or not. We're going to, I'm sure we're going to hear more information from the inspector general, but there was concern within the FBI. So this is not about bad mouthing the FBI. This this is about the FBI cleansing itself, and this is what FBI agents want to do, both retired and, and members who are still working there. What about Fusion GPS, Peter Schweitzer? And I know there's a New York Times op-ed by the Fusion GPS guy. I don't believe 90% of it myself. And that is, that, you know, he's trying to, well, Republicans hired us first. But Christopher Steele wasn't on the case with Trump-Russia collusion. And he's, and he's basically trying to justify, well, we didn't pay money. Well, we don't know who paid what money. Well, they looked at our bank accounts. Well, what do we know about Christopher Steele's bank accounts? What do we know? Why did Hillary pay for what we now know are salacious lies and propaganda from Russian sources? 
that seems to be the bigger story that they don't want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, Sean, one of the things that strikes me uh, with the Trump dossier, but also with the great reporting that uh, John came out with today, is how in these cases, uh, the FBI leadership uh, basically went against their own procedures in the case of the Steele dossier or in the case of the Clinton email investigation. Let's remember, the FBI was founded in 1908 by the Attorney General under Teddy Roosevelt precisely because the belief was a lot of investigative work was corrupt at the local level. In big mm -hmm. cities, et cetera. So they set up a series of procedures, and those procedures basically let field offices do the legwork, uh, and, and the Washington headquarters would sort of stay away. Well, as John points out in the case, case of the Clinton email investigation, it was centrally controlled by if leadership. We, so to get back to your point, well, he talks the problem about that. is not criticism yeah. of the FBI. It's, it's how the leadership violated their own procedures when investigating these very sensitive matters. And, and that's John, the you referred to that as, as in your piece as special. So here's where yeah. we, we still have surveillance, unmasking, leaking raw intelligence. We still have the dossier, which was Russian paid, we believe, paid for lies. Hillary paid for the, the dossier. We have the uranium one, which we know Jeff Sessions hasn't recused himself from. And you got Comey colluding with Strzok to put the fix in in this particular case that we're discussing. Then you got Bruce Orr, and you got Bruce Orr, he met with Fusion GPS. His wife worked for Fusion GPS on Trump, you know, uh, on that dossier, we believe. Then we got Mueller's corrupt team. 2018 prediction, John Solomon. I think the Clinton Foundation story is going to come back in a big way. The groundwork that Peter did a few years ago with the New York Times and in his book, I think there's a serious effort to go back and look at what went on in the foundation. And from that, all these other things flow from. There's a evidence that some wow. of the emails that we're dealing with in, in the Clinton email case really were about the foundation and the pay-to-play atmosphere that was there. Is I think that's going to become the story of 2018. Is 2018 the year of the big boomerang, Sarah Carter? Oh, yes, I believe so. And uh, John's right on the money with that. And so is Peter. I think not only that, I think we're going to see an investigation into Uma Abedin. I think that Uranium One is going to be tied into this very intensely. I believe that we're going to see a lot more information come out of that investigation and uh, as well as the Clinton email server. So I think mm -hmm. this is the big boomerang, Sean. And uh, you agree, Peter, last word. I do, yeah. Sean, you and I have done this uh, together for a while on corruption, and it's always about follow the money. And when you're talking about the large sums of money involving the Clintons, um, that's where you need to go. And I, I think they're right. The Clinton Foundation and the pay to play is going to be a central story of 2018. All right. You three have been pivotal in exposing a lot of this corruption. I will say this. Stay tuned to the show. Tick tock. Thank you all for being with us. Coming up, President Trump voicing his support for the protesters in Iran. Finally, also the president announcing that he will give out the most dishonest and corrupt media awards. Sean Spicer, Michelle Malcolm, they'll join us less, later. And then next, is CNN really the most trusted name in news? They actually are for potheads. Welcome back to Hannity. So protests continue all across Iran, and over 20 people now have sadly been killed. Hundreds arrested. Today, the president tweeted, the people of Iran are finally acting against the brutal, corrupt Iranian regime. All the money that President Obama so foolishly gave them went into terrorism and into their pockets. The people have little food, big inflation, zero human rights, and the U.S. is watching. Also tonight, the president responding to North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's recent nuclear threats by tweeting, well, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un just stated that, quote, the nuclear button is on his desk at all times. Will someone from his depleted and food-starved regime please inform him that I, too, have a nuclear button, but it is a much bigger and more powerful one than his, and my button actually works? And it is now with reaction. The host of Michelle Malkin investigates on CRTV. Michelle Malkin and former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer. I'll add this to the mix if I can. Uh, Michelle, he also tweeted, I will be announcing the most dishonest corrupt media awards uh, on Monday at 5 o'clock. Subjects will cover dishonesty, bad reporting, and various categories from the fake news media. Uh, anybody on your list, Sean? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's, it's fairly long, so I think the president's going to have a lot to think about over the weekend. He clearly hasn't been treated fairly by the mainstream media. There's, when you look at that Pew study and realize how disproportionately the coverage of him has been compared to other first-term presidents, it's so astronomical. True. So I think the president's going to have his work cut out for him this weekend trying to narrow down that list. You know, there's some in the liberal media. I like the fact that, Michelle, he's not trying to bribe a North Korean dictator like Bill Clinton did, and a lot of good that did, or try and bribe radical mullahs that throw gays and lesbians off roofs in Iran as a matter of law and abuse women as a matter of law. I kind of like standing up to dictators. The media can't seem to handle that. No, they can't. And that is what I love in, in so many ways about the Twitter format, because you either have moral clarity or you don't. And the fact that President Trump can say so much in 140 or 280 characters uh, and, and sum up what all of the moral cripples in the news media can't, um, I, I think it's, I think it's a, a very, very powerful and, and potent tool. Uh, and he has used it to great effect, and they hate it. That's why you had so many end-of-the-year uh, chin-pulling editorials and calls from all of these liberal media uh, types asking uh, Donald Trump to stop tweeting. No, he should continue to do it. And look what he has done. The entire transnational left is nowhere to be seen as all of these brave men and women, so many women in Iran are rising up from working class neighborhoods uh, to speak out against Islamic supremacy yeah. in a way that none of the feminist movement or the left here in America has, has ever lifted a finger to. Where, where are Barack Obama's tweets in support of the resistance yeah. in where Iran? Where was Hillary standing up for women when she was taking, you know, how many millions and millions of dollars from countries? that practice Sharia. Sean, the big blockbuster of John Solomon tonight, this is massive because there was huge, the fix was in. They knew the laws were broken. They knew classified material was on it. They knew foreign agents had it. And they wrote an exoneration before an investigation. Now, if this was Donald Trump, what would the reaction be? Oh, I mean... They would still be going at it for months on end, and and you know it's it's amazing at the how little attention it gets paid for. The the you know the president called out the sailor in the navy who was uh, who was sent to jail for that, and there was a story about him today that he can't get his life back together, and how uh, those charges have been so unfortunate for some pictures that he took aboard a submarine, uh, which again is is not. Uh, and again, I'm not getting into the merits of that case, but his life has clearly been ruined. He was punished extensively, not just in terms of, uh, of serving time in jail, but financial ruin as well. And I think that that sailor is looking and saying, no. "Yes, I might have done something wrong, but where was where was Hillary Clinton held accountable?" Uh, you know, so Michelle, I know I don't have enough time tonight. I was watching you on JetBlue yesterday morning. I think you had a half-hour monologue on the show. It was great. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I wish I had the time uh, to give you, but I want to get your thoughts. This is to me. If any of this had happened, and it was Trump, and you replaced Trump with Hillary, and the fix is in, the way it was here, I've got to believe these guys in the in the media, the destroyed Trump, they'd be foaming at the mouth. I just have a hard time understanding their lack of any fairness at this point, and they're totally gone in the tank for the Democratic Party. They are totally in the in the tank, and I think it is time to turn the tables on the colluders of uh, the, the mainstream media. So many of them have, over the years, uh, been guilty themselves of colluding with the world's worst regimes and tyrannies. I mean, uh, just to today, a colleague of mine at Conservative Review uh, reported on the New York Times making money off of tours of Iran and cooperating oh with gosh. the Iranian mullahs on that. Or how about CNN, who, whose former chief executive, Eason Jordan, admitted that they covered up torture during Saddam's regime. Yeah, uh, these people have blood on their hands. They, they are stained by their own collusion. Um, so, of this course, they're the going year. to try and, and de deflect and distract by making up the collusion narrative and the con collusion narrative network, for that matter, at CNN uh, to, to try and bring the Trump administration down. This year is going to be massive in terms of news, especially about the corrupt media. And there are very, very nervous, rightly so, people like Hillary Clinton. They should be nervous. 
people will be going to jail. I promise well, you. Well, Sean, Sean, I would say yeah. what, 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 what makes people, I think, more the most nervous in the media is when the effects of the president's tax cuts go into effect and people start oh. seeing, as they are now from industry after industry, company after country, the bottom line paycheck of themselves and their families going up, the regulatory effect of what he's doing to bring back true. jobs and manufacturing. Well, I think what's going to really sell uh, the American people is, is, is the results the president's achieving through his regulatory efforts, through the tax efforts, through his efforts that are going to come it's through gonna, on infrastructure. All of this is actually going to deliver real results. Last thing, build the wall. Build the wall. Do it now. And then that'll help get everybody right. because the country wants a secure borders. I got a roll. Uh, I promise we're going to give Michelle a whole half hour. She was great this yesterday morning on uh, Fox and Friends. When we come back, President Trump blasting Hillary Clinton's top aide after new documents now reveal she may have, in fact, compromised your national security. Tom Fitton, Pam Bondi, they're on the case. And later, why CNN should be renamed the Cannabis Fake News Network. Straight ahead. President Trump is slamming longtime Hillary Clinton aide Uma Abedin after the State Department on Friday released hundreds of work-related emails from Abedin's account. Now, they were found on her estranged husband, Anthony Weiner. Well, he's the guy in jail, his personal laptop. Judicial Watch, the organization that sued the State Department to get these emails, is reporting that five of the documents released to the public are marked classified. Oh, I thought they were about yoga and a in a wedding and a funeral. Here was reaction the president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fenton, and Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi. Tom, uh, why does it take so long to get these? You filed for this in what, 2015? Yeah, well, it's the deep state. Uh, the FBI found these records back in October of last year, and it's 14 months later, and they finally turned them over to us. Uh, a little under 700 or 800 emails, uh, and they show that confidential information, classified information, was on the laptop of Anthony Weiner. To say that, I think, is going to really infuriate a lot of Americans, especially those who have security clearances, and they're asking what the president is asking. Why wasn't there a serious criminal investigation or prosecution of Yuma Abedin and Hillary Clinton? These emails wouldn't be there but for Hillary Clinton's decision to set up this secret email server. Yuma yeah, Abedin testified me... last year, Sean, that it was Hillary Clinton's idea to get this system up and running. And this is the result. This, this violation of law and this risk to national security is a result of these emails being on, of all people, Anthony Weiner's email, uh, uh, computer system. They, well, Pam, they knew laws were broken. The FBI, now we have the emails. We have John Solomon's right. report. Th they were shocked at the amount of classified material that they found. Then we know all the, then we know the fix was in. It was rigged, right. to quote Congressman Matt Kay. The whole thing was rigged. So. Sean, let, go ahead. let me make myself perfectly clear. This has nothing to do with politics. This has everything to do with the security of our country. When you have the top secret security clearance that Huma Abedin had, you know when you send those emails that you are violating the law. And there is no objective law enforcement officer in this country that would not charge her based on that. All right. No but, one. Uh, but if, we go, if we're going to have equal justice under the law, doesn't Comey now, don't we have a case of obstruction, Pam, for him and Peter Strzok if they rigged the entire investigation, the special investigation, and they hid the evidence? And that's why Congress is calling them in. I think Strzok is in a tremendous amount of trouble. I think Comey is going to be in trouble. I think, I think in his mind, the best... Um, the best defense is a good offense, and that's what he's he's trying no. to do, but failing at it. Uh, yes, All right. but I think Huma Abedin has big problems as well, as she should. Your reaction, Tom Fenton? Well, you know, I think the Clinton email investigation was compromised and needs to be redone. You had the Clinton Lynch tarmac meeting, you had Comey's machinations, you had Peter Strzok, who uh, was pro Hillary, anti Donald Trump, there at every major decision on the Clinton email matter. You had uh, Andrew McCabe, whose wife had just gotten a ton of oh, money from all that I Hillary out. Clinton's crony. Uh, what else, what evidence do you need? I don't know if Clinton or Aberdeen should be indicted or even prosecuted at the end. How do you but not we need get an indicted? Honest These are felonies. But we need an honest investigation. We haven't had that yet. And Jeff Sessions or whoever's involved oh with the gosh. Justice Department don't needs to step up. And if they don't,
the president should order them to do an honest investigation. We need like six special counsels, but it's all unfolding. Thank you both. Happy New Year to both of you. We appreciate Happy it. New Happy New Year. All right, when we come back, all right, you're not going to believe what a fake news network, one of them, they help people that love pot light their pot and their bongs on New Year's Eve. <laughs> I'm not making it up. And we have the videotape. Next. All right, our video of the day tonight. All right, so a so-called news network featured a very, let's say, unusual way to ring in the new year. Yes, during CNN, the cannabis fake news network special coverage, Randy Kay reporting live from a party in Denver, Colorado, dedicated to smoking pot, and even took the opportunity to show their viewers how few they are, some of the more unusual ways to smoke weed and get really high. Watch this. We have the party started here. There is a little bit of a purple haze. Um, we call this magic bus the Canna bus. Get it? Whoa. Randy, we'll check in with you. We're going to be really I'm careful. I'm more worried about Randy. I am okay. not worried about Randy. Randy is the only person I'm not worried about. I'm worried about Don Ryan. I'm not worried about Randy K. Look at what's on the other end of the gas mask. Yes, a bong. And of course, they couldn't stand to see a bong that didn't have any um, cannabis in it, so you you actually put it in the bong, you filled it up, yeah. and you don't want to you don't want to you packed you packed it. Packed okay, it. okay. So you're gonna now what? Now you're gonna celebrate a little New I mean, Year's I'm early gonna be or honest what? Honest with you, I've never hit one. Oh of right. Before, so okay. This I don't think this is really what a gas mask is used for, but um, wow. Okay. This is New Year's Eve, Denver this style. This is legal everybody. in Colorado. Bong lessons from the fake news cannabis news network we'll have our video of the day every day makes you wonder by the way how low well no actually how high cnn will try to boost their ratings there in a in the basement in third place anyway before we go tonight um all right we are going to be featuring the video of the day as you just saw today will the tweet of the day and the hate hannity hotline is back now you can say anything you want to me as a matter of fact i encourage you just let it out. This is the year that a lot of truth is going to come out that they won't be reporting in the lamestream media. By the way, last year, this was the number one show on cable news, both in total audience and in demo. Thank you for making that happen. Leave a message, 877-225-8587. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow night. That's all the time we have left, but let not your heart be troubled. What are you writing down now? What's that number again? Oh, <laughs> eight, seven, seven.